It's the Opperman Report. Join digital forensic investigator and PI Ed Opperman for an in-depth discussion of conspiracy theories, strategy of New World Order resistance, high-profile court cases in the news, and interviews with expert guests and authors on these topics and more. It's the Opperman Report. And now, here is investigator Ed Opperman. Okay, welcome to the Opperman Report. I am your host, Private Investigator Ed Opperman. This show is brought to you by EmailRevealer.com. You go to EmailRevealer.com, you get an autographed copy of my book, How to Become a Successful Private Investigator. Also, too, at EmailRevealer.com, we do all kinds of things for you. If you think your husband or your wife or your girlfriend's cheating on you, you send us their email address, and we trace it back to online dating websites. We catch them cheating online. They secretly got an ad on uh, Match.com or one of these websites, and we're going to catch them cheating, catch them in the act. Okay, we can even expand on that investigation. What we do is once we catch them on there, we, we uh, send them these uh, messages from these pretext uh, websites that I have, these uh, fake accounts, and we get them to exchange phone numbers and pictures and stuff like that. We catch them with the goods. Emailrevealer.com. I could tell you some funny stories about that one day. Okay, normally I do uh, this segment live. We're, we're, it's Friday, uh, 6 16, 2017, but it's only 10 o'clock in the afternoon because what a, whoa, whoa, what a crazy day I got. What a crazy week. It's crazy over here, guys. Uh, um, we're moving. We're trying to move. We're trying to find an apartment. My car's broken down. A guy has my car. Uh, he came here and towed it away the other day. And he, he was fixing the car. He broke some bolts for changing the thermostat, so he had to take it into the shop. Uh, so we got no car. We got to shop around for apartments. So I've been taping uh, segments uh, for the members section like a lunatic. I've been taping stuff. We've put up like 10 shows in the members section. One that just went up is incredible. Um, is uh, Al Capone's Beer Wars, A Complete History of Organized Crime in Chicago uh, with John Binder. Then we got a great touching story with uh, Greg Butcherini, Butcheroni, Greg Butcheroni, uh, who was uh, actually uh, survived uh, being molested by uh, Jerry Sandusky. And he describes a whole big uh, uh, network of pedophiles and stuff like that, trading kids back and forth. Uh, very interesting stuff. Organized crime figures, all kinds of wild stuff. Uh, an interview that Chuck O'Celli did with me last week. We have that up in the member section. I tape with that. By the way, I'm going to be on Tim Kelly coming up and also, too, on uh, uh, Richard Hoagland's uh, The Other Side of Midnight. A show with uh, Sean Atwood about uh, who killed Barry Seal. Pablo Escobar or George W. Bush, Michael Butterfield about ZodiacKillersFacts.com, and a show with Trevor Aronson about the FBI going undercover as a documentary film crew. And then also I did a, a commentary on that. Uh, we put a couple of shows up there that aren't in the archives. They're in the members section, but you can't find them in the archives. So we have even more shows on there that you, that you see when you go to OppermanReport.com. Uh, one, we're going to have a, a lost episode. Everybody is all upset that it was on YouTube, so we took it down. We put it on... Uh, uh, we're going to put it on the member section. Another one is a show we did about the Kaylee Haley Cummings uh, with Timothy Holmseth. We're going to be putting that in the member section. Uh, a bunch of shows that are like lost episodes that we had problems with uh, in, in YouTube and stuff like that, stalkers and stuff like that, harassing us. So we're going to have them up in the members section at OpmanReport.com. Because I'm moving, I'm, I'm offering a kind of special deal. Uh, you can contact me directly at OpmanReport at gmail.com, and uh, I'll hook you up with a deal. I'll uh, give you, a, if you PayPal me direct, I'll give you 13 months for 69 bucks and a free book. You can't beat that. Uh, there's a lot of great content up there. Tomorrow, 5 p.m., we have a big show. I put out a press release on this. I'm getting contacted by the press. It's a show about uh, Lee Boyd Malvo, the D.C. sniper. Remember, he was a young man that was taken under the wing of John Mohammed. Uh, my guest, Anthony Mioli, uh, has been talking to this kid for seven years while he's been in prison. And we have tape recordings of him in prison, exclusive tape recordings that no one else has, um, where the kid's admitting to another 30 shootings, all these different shootings all over the place. Some of them were mafia hits that they were doing. Uh, others were robberies that they were doing. So these guys were up to a lot more stuff than you hear um, uh, in the mainstream news about the D.C. snipers. Um, next week on Saturday, 
um, on the American Freedom Radio Network and all the regular stations. Uh, we have um, uh, a show about uh, Stephen Strainer, the little boy that was kidnapped. He did the movie, I Know My Name is Stephen, and his older brother, Carrie Strainer. We have this private investigator coming on with exclusive information once again. You won't find anywhere else. I don't you know. What would happen to me if I died and the show was gone? You wouldn't hear any of this stuff because no one's doing it. <laughs> Tell you a bunch of crap they're making up. Oh my God, we're gonna get into that tonight. What a week this has been. Moo, uh, what a hubba 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 hubba. <laughs> okay. Carrie Strainer and Steven Strainer, that's a great show, great content. And uh, I want to thank to Michael Parziali uh, who just did the show with me tonight about the uh, Hollywood pedophilia and sex crimes about uh, Bill Cosby and the, uh, we're trying to get the guy from the, that clown town, that guy, I'm trying to book him. Okay. One of the shows I just uh, it recorded, and it's up on the members, it's up in the archives and the members section, is the show about, that I did with Anthony Robert Davis. No, attorney Robert Davis Lunas. <laughs> Try it one more time, take three. Attorney Robert David Oh my god. Attorney Robert Davis Lewis, and he's filing the Freedom of Information Act request for um, Linda Ives, who's the mother of one of these young boys, the boys on the tracks down there in Mena, Arkansas. Now, that's a great show, okay? And I really got along good with this guy. And this is probably the best um, description. If you, if you read, when we have the, the, the complaint that he wrote, for the Freedom of Information Act request that he filed against the CIA and the DEA and the FBI and the state and all that kind of stuff down there in Arkansas. Probably the best description of the whole what happened down there in Mena Airport. And one thing that you don't hear a lot is about how Bill Clinton, while governor, ran the money laundering for the Mena Coke operation through a small business loan uh, agency that he found that he created down there in Arkansas. So Bill Clinton was working for the CIA way back while he was still governor down there. He knew Ali North. And he knew all these international uh, drug dealers and leaders of other countries that were part of this, this drug smuggling stuff. It, he had all of that cash. Okay, that, According to these uh, documents, he was getting 10% of all the, of the drug money that uh, was coming through, that being laundered through there. There's a story in there about how he, he had one of his own Arkansas state troopers he helped him get a, 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 an audition, a, a job interview with the CIA. And Barry Seal, for his job interview, took him on a coke run down in South America. <laughs> okay, no, that was his, that was his uh, uh, application to join the CIA. And it's kind of interesting. And, and, and I, I want you to catch what I'm saying to you because I'm reading this complaint. And I'm talking to the guest. And I run across the name Sal Reale, Salvatore Reale. Now, in New York City, I, I knew him as a private investigator in New York City. And I think I was discussing this once with Ted Rubenstein, and, he, and the name Salvatore Reale came up. And I said, hey, I know Sal Reale. And I thought about it more and more and more. And uh, I tell a little story about how I met Reale in New York and about all the PIs would used to be jealous of Reale. They used to say his name with a sneer, Reale. <laughs> that reality, <laughs> you know what I mean. And he went on to become the director of security for Kennedy Airport, and he was calling the shots there, turning off the uh, customs. And hey, we got a plane coming in, no customs. You know, we had a plane going out, no customs. You know, so he was protecting them. But he got busted in some kind of shakedowns and stuff like that with a union or whatever it was. And I remember he was given a really bad name to PI. So everybody was really pissed off at the time. I was just a young man at the time, but kind of interesting how um. You know, here I was bopping around thinking I was doing stuff, and this guy's part of a multi-billion dollar cocaine operation. I had no clue. I mean, yeah, but imagine if I would have said the, you know, made the right connection with this guy. I wouldn't be sitting here in his dump uh, looking to move. <sighs> but it makes me wonder. How come you hear all these YouTubers out there, right? They got all these incredible... You know, I'm so impressed. I listen to... I turn on YouTube, you know? Because I, I want to get the, the latest news just like you do. That's where do you go? You go to YouTube, right? They're all, the YouTubers got all the info. And these guys got the most incredible sources. They got these deep intel sources that tell them about these dirty bombs coming into ports and all this. They got, man, they got some heavy duty connections, these guys. How come it is that you never, I think I kind of I like to think I've done a thing or two in my life. <laughs> How come it is you never hear them like they're interviewing a guest or something and a name comes up and I say, oh, yeah, I know so-and-so. 
let me tell you a little story about it. We went to a barbecue together. Oh, well, yeah, we, you know, we, we did this deal together. You know, how come that never comes up ever? <laughs> how come? You know, with me, it happens all the time. It almost happens almost every show. Yeah, people come on the show. We, we know the same people. We know the same stuff. How come, well, how come all these other, these great YouTuber investigators, man? Well, they're not investigators. They're researchers, they call themselves. <sighs> Here I am, a known guy with real connections to 24-hour news stories. I read my bio. Go out there and find it. It's on IMDb. It's on my Opperman Report box, but it's all over the place. That There's several books out there written when I'm in the book, you know, written about the Pizza Connection, written about the Sarah Palin case. You know, I'm in the book. They wrote about me in the book. Known guy. How come I don't have these kind of these sources, these amazing sources? Why do they choose to go to someone who has to pick up the phone to call up the Coast Guard? Well, why would they choose him <laughs> to release this information to? <sighs> okay. And why, but another question too is why would a guy who has uh, the intel back, by the way, when you talk to real people in the CIA and the FBI, they don't talk like this intel, <laughs> all that fancy talk that you hear from these YouTubers. No one talks like that in real life. And my connections to these people, going to conventions and stuff like that, and classes and seminars and crap, you know. Why is it that a guy who would know about a dirty bomb in a container ship going to a certain, he knows the name of the container ship, he knows the port where it's going into, this guy has those kind of connections and the background and the resources to get that kind of information. That's pretty important information to have. And once you have it in your hand, you don't also have the kind of connections and resources to to channel that information to the right people to get to the Coast Guard. The only you're you, you're a guy with a background in the CIA or the or the NSA they say these days or the FBI, and you have this information somehow you got it, okay? Because you have access to a satellite or whatever, right? <laughs> right? Right? Well, how is so you got it? Well, what am I going to do with this information? My God, there's thousands of lives at risk. Let me, let, me, let, let me contact a YouTuber, a crazy YouTuber, in fact, a crazy YouTuber, in fact, who gets busted for DUI 12 hours later, okay, so that the YouTuber can call up the Coast Guard from their public phone number. Sounds pretty bad when, when, when you hear it that way, right? It sounds pretty stupid, right? When, when you hear it that way, it sounds pretty ridiculous, doesn't it? I wish we got to start pulling our heads out of our asses. Okay, now, let's check the time, see how I'm doing here, I'm not used to doing it, oh, only 12 minutes, oh my god, I'm halfway through my notes, okay, let's see, well, who was it that's been saying it all along, since before the election, that President Mr. Trump, but back then we just called him Mr. Trump, but now we call him President Mr. Trump, was going to wind up in prison, who was that told you, that was me, <laughs> okay, all right, I've been telling you all along, right? Hey, this guy has been nothing but a con man, a too big con man his whole life. He's been sloppy with everything he does. All his cons have been sloppy cons. Trump University, you know, doesn't even have the paperwork correct. You know, he's not even trying, this guy. They, they shut down his uh, charitable thing, you know, Trump Charities, whatever it's called, Trump Foundation. Wasn't set up correctly. He's got money to hire real lawyers and do stuff with real accounts. Everything's all sloppy. Kind of, but he also follows the teachings of Roy Cohen, who was a real pushy guy, who, who uh, um, pushed every legal limit to its extreme. You push it all the way to as far as you can go. Roy Cohen never paid any taxes because he said that his whole life, 24 hours a day, was a living expense because he worked as attorney 24 hours a day. So his car was a working expense. His telephone was a business expense. Every meal he ate was a business expense. Everything he did, the air he breathed, was a, so he didn't have to pay taxes. It was all an expense. So very interesting. Okay, And, and Trump follows that example because Trump, uh, Cohen, Roy Cohen was one of his uh, uh, mentors. They call rabbis, they call him in New York. He was a rabbi for Trump. But you got to think, Trump, you, 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 I was talking at the beginning about Clinton, about how Clinton, you know, he got into this coke smuggling thing. He's governor down there, southern governor, and then they dropped the CIA. He's doing this coke smuggling. He launders the money for him. He's got all those big league connections, man, Clinton. 
that he could pull this stuff off. And here you got Trump 